just a minute it got stuck actually okay <clears throat> so we'll start with the soybean okay so as you see the actually i have been told to deal with the bacterial viral then uh, viroid and uh, fastidious vesicular bacteria okay so fungi will be handled by other educators so i will be handling the minor pathogens okay so when it comes to bacterial especially bacterial blight in case of soya bean okay so it is caused by surnavana syringe pathover glycinia okay in last class i have told you about the pathover system right <clears throat> the same way we are classifying according to host pathover that is glycinia the new name can be savastoni also okay the synonyms you can see the pseudomona savastoni pathover glycine okay so if we come to symptoms how you will be identifying when you just enter into the, enter into the field okay the thing is <clears throat> you will see first thing is water soaked lesion so water soaked lesions are nothing but just when you take out that leaf and you just see under the sun you will see a opaque uh, translucent that means partially you can able to see the other side of if you are looking through the leaf okay so that is called water soaked lesion or translucent okay so like that the lesions will be formed later the multiplication of the bacteria will take place that will be leading to the necrosis okay so necrosis will be taking place then around that the yellow region or yellow halo will be there right so this is the characteristics of the bacterial blight <clears throat> this is the initial stage okay then once it approaches severity then we can see <clears throat> the entire lamina will be collapsed okay so the entire lamina will be collapsed along with the whatever the see here whatever the infection is there so this area will be collapsed and it will be like short hole symptom here you can see i hope right so like that it will be visible when you enter into the field okay so as the name indicate it is caused by pseudomonas syringe or savastoni uh, glycine okay then coming to next disease that is pustule okay so the causal organism is xanthomonas axonopodis glycinis right so <clears throat> how you will differentiate between uh, bacterial blight and bacterial pustule right so if you consider as the name only indicates pustule means it is a some raised portion okay so say this is a leaf okay so this is leaf you will you could able to see some raised portion on the leaf usually it will be under side under side of the leaves okay then the corresponding region okay the upper surface of this pustule will have yellow halo that is a black center so this is how you can easily differentiate between pustule and bacterial blight and one more thing is people usually get confused with the rust right so i have been rust but the rust can be if you just blow away it will easily get rid of okay if you just blow that means it will it, in here it will disperse but the bacterial pustule it won't be it will be just like a, a encrustation okay that iron rusting whatever you can see on the iron bar the same way it will be there okay so it is it will not be easily detached from the leaf that is one thing then after that <clears throat> once the infection progress okay you can see the colles right colles is nothing but the spots will be joined together okay like this it will be joined together so that is called colles so the entire leaf will become uh, what you can necrotic uh, necrosis will be there in the entire leaf okay then followed by defoliation will be there okay so premature defoliation will be there right so these are all the bacterial diseases with respect to soybean when it comes to viral diseases we will start with the soybean mosaic virus right so <clears throat> initially as the name only indicates see whatever the in, in case of pathology whatever you are studying the names only it will have some meaning right the whatever the mosaic mottling okay so everything will have their own uh, symptom uh, symptomatic characteristics okay from that only you can easily write so here the mosaic means initially it will start from the trifoliate leaves or younger leaves right so it will be usually 
crinkling will be there right so here you can see some crinkling or roughness of the leaf is there right yeah so after that once it starts progressing then you can see the mosaic so mosaic is nothing but what is the difference between mosaic and mortal please anyone answer me what is the difference between mosaic and mortal please answer me is it audible right you should answer otherwise uh, it should be a discussion where right so is it audible please answer me anyone yes sir okay so anyone knows what is the difference between mosaic and mortal okay the thing is see <laughs> here if the green area is alternated with the light green areas okay then it is called mottling that means there is no other color integration with the whatever the leaf lamina or any part of the plant okay so there is no other color mixed with the uh, symptoms but if it is yellow or green or whatever the next color okay so either of the color oh, if it is mixed with that then it we can call it as a mosaic so mottling is nothing but just like a chlorosis okay a chlorosis will be there but it won't be displaced with any other color but in case of mosaic usually green areas will be displaced with the yellowing so that's why we, we we will be calling it as a mosaic okay yeah. any doubt okay so <clears throat> this is the initial symptom so then followed by once the disease uh, pro uh, progress starts then you can see stunting okay with respect to uh, bacterial and viral diseases usually fungal will also have stunting but <clears throat> if it is wilting and other diseases or stem oriented diseases it will have stunting okay but if it is only uh, leaf spot oriented means the stunting won't be there okay if it is there also you won't be noticed that much okay you may not be identifying prominently but in case of virus and bacteria bacteria also you can able to see but in virus it is very prominent okay because it is taking enter the host so that's why the stunting will be very prominent with respect to virus and a lower organism right because it is completely dependent on the host so thereby it will try to reduce the its metabolic uh, metabolic activity so <clears throat> the stunting will be there right then of course if it infects at early stage then the reproductive structures won't be produced right and one more thing is the terminal death will be there okay so terminal death see here you can see the drying of the twigs right so because of this soybean mosaic virus it can be uh, terminal death then the same thing as i told see here the, you can see the mosaic right so young leaves will be getting mosaic then <clears throat> yeah see at later stages if it infects the staining of the seeds can be there the blackened seeds you can see here so it is because of the soybean mosaic virus and even the aphid infestation okay so it is transmitted by aphid usually black aphid okay and here you can see the genus of this soybean mosaic virus is potivirus right so genus is the potivirus and species is soybean mosaic virus right so and even the family is potiviridae right so in exams they may be asking uh, even genus family but i don't think order if you want order you can take down it is a patata virus okay so this is the classification with respect to soybean mosaic virus right okay then coming to bean pod mortal virus right so <clears throat> this also now it has been introduced okay so the thing is as the name only indicates it is mainly infecting the pod okay that means reproductive structure right or economical part of the plant right so when it infects initially so here you can see the mottling right so previously i have told about the mosaic and mottle right so here here you can see there is no that much yellowing only the whatever the green color areas are there it is replaced with the light green color areas right so this is mottling okay then followed by of course the you just take down as the wherever the virus infection infestation will be there or infection will be there usually it will have stunting right 
so virus means the shredding will be there and seldom the deformation of the leaves will be there okay so these are all key important uh, symptoms then here you can see the stunting of course then followed by mottling of the pod is there see, sorry seeds see here you can see the stain the whatever the color you can take it as creamy color so that is replaced by some dull color right so this is called seed mottling will also be there okay or you can call it as yeah then followed by it is transmitted by leaf or bean leaf beetle right so usually how and uh, seldom it is also seen that it can be transmitted through the seed right and one more thing is how it is going to infect or how it is going to transmit means as you know that when the beetle start feeding on the soybean it will when it feeds the after feeding it will just jump onto the next plant okay healthy plant there it will try to regurgitate whatever the plant material it has taken from the diseased ones while regurgitating the virus particle it will come out and it will start uh, entering into the plants or um, tissue okay so this is how the virus will be inoculated into the particular uh, tissue okay yeah so the next one is tobacco streak virus okay short form that is tsv so as you know that the tsv is ilar virus right so it is transmitted by pollen and mechanical trips okay so and even it can be parthenium can also play a major role in transmitting tsv right so what are the symptom means the initial symptom is here you can see the necrosis on the pods will be there okay so the necrosis will be there right then after that here even the necrosis on the pods and even the twigs also right then the one more key feature is proliferation of the buds or the pods usually proliferation we will see in case of phytoplasma right but in case of tobacco streak virus in soya bean we could be able to see the proliferation of the pods right then if you just open the uh, pod you can see the seed being infected seed infection or seed necrosis can be seen on the uh, inside the pod right and uh, as i told it is a ilar virus so genus is ilar virus right and the species is tobacco streak virus right and family you can take it as bromoviridae yes sir <laughs> okay so yeah so coming to next disease that is phytoplasma okay so it is not major disease but still there are uh, some reports regarding this phytoplasma infection in soybean okay so the initial symptom the here you can see proliferation of the buds are taking place even though proliferation is taking place the size will be greatly reduced the size will be reduced up to 60 to 70 percent of its natural size, right? So there is no economic usage of this. So after that, the leaf you can see the little leaf or the whatever the internodes are there that will be shortened. Okay, shortening of the internode will be there, right? So these are all the, and of course you know that once if it infects early means the reproductive structure will be delimited. Okay. then the next one is it is transmitted through the leaf hopper and it is assumed to be transmitted through oroceus albicinctus okay so this is the uh, vector right any doubt with, res with respect to soybean diseases please ask me okay so coming to next uh, crop that is sunflower okay so in case of sunflower so we'll start with the bacterial leaf spot right so the organism is pseudomonas syringae pathover helianthi right so i think if you enter into the field so you might have seen the leaves will be most probably even the altern area will be very prominent right the same way beside you can see the infestation of the bacteria or the pseudomonas also the 
lesions will be very minute okay alternaria will be having very big uh, lesions right but with respect to um, pseudomonas so it will have very minute right so the minute spots will be there then followed by the whatever the yellowing there it will be progressed into necrosis areas right so this is the one character then followed by once the again the progress will be there at the age of uh, once the aging occurs then whatever the infection or necrotic areas will be there that will be dropped up or you can say uneven short hole symptom will be there usually short hole symptom we can see in case of sarcospora like this thing right but here also uh, when i when you just whenever the necrotic portion are there so that will be dropped off and the uneven short hole symptom can be seen with respect to the bacterial leaf spot right so the next one is apical chlorosis right so the name only indicates apical chlorosis means <clears throat> the tip or the trifoliate leaf or the uh, growing shoot right or young leaf so that will be infected first right so the infection is caused by pseudomonas syringae pathover hegetis right so here you can see the infected field right here see only the topmost leaves are visible right with the yellow color right rest of the plant is uh, very greenish right if it is occurs where a very early stage means the entire plant will become stunted and even the yellowing will be there for entire plant right but when it occurs later stage of the crop so the yellowing will be restricted to the apical portion of the plant and rest of the plant will be greenish okay so this is how the apical chlorosis can be can infect right the next disease is bacterial stock rot so this is caused by pectobacterium keratovarum okay uh, subspecies keratovarum and this is the one species or one organism another one is pectobacterium atrosepticum okay so this is the second pathogen so as you know that pectobacterium is closely a relative of irvinia right initially they were same but later because of their um, uh, differences or uh, uh, uniqueness they have been separated right the same way the pectobacterium it it will start from the necrosis okay that means the death of the tissues or the cells will be there when it infects the plant right here you can see either it is the stem or the petiole or the stalk whatever you can call it as the infection will be there on that then followed by the key prominent symptom is longitudinal splitting okay so longitudinal splitting or transfer splitting along the stem right so and one more key feature is if you just observe the oozing of the bacterial colony will be there okay oozing that is nothing but bacterial colony right see here you can see the oozing of the bacterial colony from the infected uh, plants right so this is how you can easily observe whether it is infected with the bacterial stock rot or not right okay and one more as i told here it is causing stock rot along with it will cause head rot also right that is also most prominent disease so the same pathogen pectobacterium atrosepticum okay right so it starts from head okay so back side of the head it will start right and it will progress towards the petals or the rashes whatever so it will infect entire head so the basic enzyme what it is producing is or it will degrade the pectinase pectin okay by producing pectinase okay so the maceration of the tissues will take place maceration is nothing but the whatever the say if you are having say this is the cell wall of the plant right so primary cell wall and secondary cell wall and middle lamella those will be there right so because of this respective enzymes it will degrade each component thereby the structural integrity of the cell will be cell wall will be dissolved and it will be macerated or rotten so the rot is nothing but scientifically it is called biologically it is called it as maceration right so like this the rot is being 
uh, we can see right then one more is once it dries the blackening of the head can be seen see here it is usually black but when the uh, during uh, sunny days the thing it is the uh, head will become very black okay so this is also one of the prominent symptom where you can identify right okay so this is about the bacterial diseases and with respect to virus right so here you can see sunflower necrosis disease i think you might have heard about this right so initially it start from the same like necrosis will be there or the death of the particular cell or the tissues will be there right so either it may be on uh, stalk or stem or pedicel okay then the lodging will be there right so the lodging will be there the plant lodges lodges then followed by as i told necrosis will be there and on leaf also you can see on leaf also the necrosis will start right then on head also if it infects very early the reproductive structures won't be there but if it infects very late okay the anyway the yield will be reduced that is one thing then followed by <coughs> the necrosis on the right uh, head also will be there right okay then coming to next one that is phyllodi okay so that is asterellus which is caused by phytoplasma so here you can see the whatever the reproductive structures are there that is transformed into leaf like structure i think you might have seen in bajra right green here the same way the head is transformed into leaf structures right here you can see so <clears throat> this is how the economical part will be damaged because of phytoplasma right and it is also transmitted by leaf hopper then coming to next crop that is safflower right so in safflower the major disease is with respect to virus it is cucumber mosaic virus right so as you know that the genus is cucumo virus right the genus is cucumo virus and the family you can take it on as bromoviridae right and usually it's a tripartite right okay isohedral in uh, shape and it is tripartite right then <clears throat> the species is cucumber mosaic virus right so this is how you can classify this and if you consider the symptom as the name only indicate it is causing mosaic on the leaf okay so if, there will be alternating yellow and green areas so of course uh, the one more key symptom is it will just dissolve or deform the okay dissolve or deform the leaf see here you can see how it is deformed the entire leaf right and of course the stunting and yield reduction will be there right and it is transmitted through the aphid okay so coming to next crop that is mustard so <clears throat> mustard as you know that the or you can call it as crucifer the major bacterial disease is Exan uh, black rot, right? It is caused by Xanthomonas compestris, compestris or XCC, right? So <clears throat> mainly, as you know, that it has particular uh, characterizable symptom, right? That means, see the V not symptom we can easily see because it will enter through the hydatode. So when it enters through the hydatode like this, right? so it will travel along this so that's why it is making a v notch see like this it will make a v notch if it is a leaf means like this it will make a v notch okay and of course after that it will be a death of the cells will be there or leaf lesions will be there right spots will be there then followed by yellowing of the surrounding area right okay then the <coughs> next virus is turnip mosaic virus right so usually it is mainly confined to the turnip crop right 
so but on crucifers also it is causing or on mustard also it is there right so it is the genus is potivirus and species is turnip mosaic virus so as i told family is potiviridae right and order is patata virus right so the initial symptoms what we can expect from the turnip mosaic virus is see here anyway it will start from the minute circular uh, spots okay then it will progress into a mosaic see here you can see especially circular mosaic will be there circular pattern will be there here you see the yellowing is alternated with the green areas right so <clears throat> later the anyway the lamina size will be reduced right then stunting will be there of course if it is at early stage the reproductive structures will be delimited right then the yield will be reduced drastically right and it is also transmitted through a feed okay so most of the potivirus are transmitted through a feed in non persistent manner right okay just make note of it okay coming to next crop that is sisem right or sisem so here the bacterial leaf spot is caused by either xanthomonas or pseudomonas okay so both can cause the infection separately okay it's not a complex thing it is either xanthomonas can cause or pseudomonas can cause or both can infect on a same crop okay but it is not complex okay uh, without this this can also occur or without this this can also occur right so when it comes to xanthomonas here you can see it also starts from the minute water soaked lesions right then it will become a uh, spot okay so you can see spots will become necrosis just like this black black color okay then here you can see the black colored necrosis can be seen then it will progress into a large area right with a gray center okay this is with, with respect to xanthomonas when it comes to pseudomonas syringae sesame petavor sesame right so it is also start with the water soaked lesion but the color will be dull enough okay so it will be dull when it compared with the xanthomona okay so it will be brownish lesion so here it will be usually a blackish lesion okay so here the causal organism is xanthomona compestis petavor sesame and here it is pseudomona syringae petavor sesame right so the next the most important disease with respect to sesamum is phyllodi right which is caused by phytoplasma right okay so <clears throat> if you just enter into the sesamum field here you can see infestation will be usually very high okay so practically if you just enter into the sesamum field the phyllodi of the sesamum will be very high okay and that too because of the activity of leaf hopper right that is albicinctus sorry orocious albicinctus right so if you take on the symptoms the phyllodi is nothing but the floral parts will be deformed into leaf like structure here you can see i think right so here you can see the leaf it is a floral part okay so the floral part has been given a green color and it is looking like a leaf right here it is the flower and here you can see so like that it will be deformed and of course the leaf will be reduced drastically just like a little leaf right so little leaf symptom will be there so these are all more than enough to identify whether it is infected with phyllodi or not okay then coming to next oil seed crop that is groundnut right so it is rastonia solnarsherum that is bacterial wilt right so with respect to bacterial wilt as you know that rastonia solnarsherum which causes wilting in so so many crops okay it is having high host strain right so here also here you can see the twisting of the leaves are there that means curling okay it is because of the sudden wilting okay Uh, the reason behind sudden wilting is nothing but it will just block the xylem and phloem so that it won't get the water supply or the food whatever it wants to get so because of that the leaf will start rolling okay because especially during sunny days it will be like this so once it 
uh, night occurs then it will be recovered to the normal position okay so like that it will be the initial death so once the disease severity occurs progressively so for three to four days it will just block the vascular bundle by avoiding food supply to the plant okay then the plant will die okay so this is about the bacterial weed that is caused by rostonia colnesiara right okay then coming to viral diseases okay which is most important with respect to groundnut so here you can see taspo virus so groundnut bud necrosis virus okay so can anyone tell me the what is the full form of taspo virus can anyone please answer anyone what is the full form of taspo virus sir don't know okay see the taspo is nothing but tomato spotted wilt virus right so usually it infects the tomato crop right but <clears throat> here also there are reports that it is infecting other crops also okay so but basically taspo virus but the name actually this is a old name if you just take out it is a ortho taspo virus okay the new classification has been given as a ortho taspo virus right so this is the genus okay so groundnut bud necrosis virus is a species right okay so if you just take out how i should identify whether it the groundnut plant is infected with the groundnut bud necrosis virus or not okay so the first thing is initially you can see whether the leaf is having circular or ring spots or not if you just take out there will be circular ring spot it won't be uh, brownish or slides are visible right just answer me sir okay yes sir. so <clears throat> see here you okay so here you can see the leaf will be having a chloratic ring spot okay you can call it as a chloratic right because the whatever the green portion or chloro chlor chlorophyll is there that will be removed okay so because of that chlorosis will be there and it will be in a round shape like this okay like this it will be round so you can that is the first identifying ident ident symptom when you enter into the field the second one is you just take on the upper portion of the plant okay here usually it will be uh, brownish or necrosis will be there necrosis nothing but that's what death of the cell okay don't confuse with the, too much thing it is that nothing but the tissues will be died uh, yeah tissues will be died because of the bacterial or virus infection okay so that is called necrosis that's it so here you can see there will be a brownish lesions on the leaf okay that is one thing then as the name only indicates bud necrosis means see whatever the flowering buds are there that will be infected so that means see if the flowering buds are infected means the lateral shoots will be increasing right so that if the terminal buds is bud is infected which are what you can see right see here you can see here the tikka also the tikka is also there but here the prominent symptom is here you can see the death of the twig right the terminal twig it is because of groundnut bud necrosis virus right so this is a, these are all the key symptoms how you can identify and it is transmitted through the thrips okay so that is the key important uh, character with respect to arthrotaspo virus right then the one more disease is peanut stem necrosis virus okay so now we have studied groundnut bud necrosis virus the another one is peanut stem necrosis virus see this one is as i told it is taspo virus or ortho taspo virus okay so this this is the genus this is ilar group as i told the ilar group is with respect to tobacco streak virus right this is a species right ilar group is a genus okay so under ilar groups okay ilar virus it is having peanut stem necrosis virus as 
peanut stem necrosis viruses one species and tobacco streak viruses another species okay so like this it will be there okay so don't confuse it is the species here is pot sorry peanut stem necrosis virus right okay so <clears throat> how you are going to differentiate between whether the plant is infected with tospo virus or ilar virus right so if you enter into the field this is the key feature you have to look into okay so as i told here it mainly start with the ring spot okay the ring spots will be there with respect to tospo but here you can't see any ring spot no ring spots will be there right that is one thing then usually it is confined to as the name only indicate it is mainly confined to the stem but it is mainly confined to the bud okay so that is the prominent symptom okay then followed by the infection on the pods will be there ground pods right but here we can't see the infection on the pods won't be there in case of tospoirus but here if you just pull out the plant and if you see the pods will have necrosis pecs okay that is because of the peanut stem necrosis virus right and as you see that it is either transmitted through the pollen right or the thrips right but here it is transmitted through the thrip so this is how you can easily transmit and even as i told it is can be it can be transmitted through the parthenium also right so that's why parthenium plays a key role in transmitting the ilar virus right okay then coming to next disease that is groundnut clump virus disease right so as the name indicates clump means the plant say the plant is like that the healthy one the entire plant will just like become a a ball like structure okay it will be clump right so the entire plant will become a clump so you can't differentiate easily so like that it will be there okay so that's why the name has been given as clump virus right and it is transmitted by polymyxa graminis can anyone name this what is this organism polymyxa graminis is it insect or bacteria or fungi or protozoa just tell me what is this polymyxa graminis anybody okay so this is a protozoa or myxomycetes okay so that is transmitting the uh, virus right so the thing is <clears throat> as you see here polymyxa graminis means it is mainly infecting the cereal crops okay though it can able to infect the groundnut also that's why the field whatever you are having you should avoid the cereal especially barley rice rice wheat etc so these are all the highly susceptible for the groundnut clump virus disease so if you are growing this crop and if you are just keep bringing the groundnut in next season there are high chances of infection of the groundnut clump virus okay just have that idea okay so coming to next one is groundnut rosette disease right so here what how i can differentiate between the groundnut clump virus and groundnut rosette disease right so clump means as i shown here the entire plant will become a just like a, a umbrella or what you can call it as entire ball like structure okay but here the plant will be normal but the thing is the top portion of the plant will have rosette form rosette is nothing but i think you might have seen the uh, this one rose right how the rose petals uh, petals will be like whirling right so like that the formation of the upper portion of the leaves will be there that is called rosette okay so the whirling will be there okay the entire plant upper portion will be started to form a rose like structure rose flower like structure okay in this there are three different types okay one is yellow rosette disease okay and another one is green mosaic okay so like that there are so many different uh, difference are there and usually this is caused by a complex virus this is not a single virus infecting the crop it is a complex virus right so the complex is nothing but 
groundnut okay rosette virus that is the one virus then second one is groundnut rosette associated virus that is second one then the third one is groundnut rosette satellite virus okay so these three are the key important factor for the infection to get established okay so that's why i'm telling groundnut rosette disease is a complex disease okay and uh, the genus is umbra virus okay and the species are as i told these are the three species are associated with respect to groundnut rosette disease okay and the family you can take down as tombus viride okay so these are all about the specification about the groundnut rosette disease and it is transmitted through the of it okay so in india it is not that much seen but in case of western africa and african continent it is highly uh, epidemic okay then coming to groundnut stripe virus right so <clears throat> as the name indicates here you can see the stripes right the green area and the surrounding will be chlorosis or yellowing is there just like in a stripe format the greens are stripe like this like tiger stripes like that symptom so it is transmitted through the seed okay it is transmitted through the seed and it is a quarantine it is a quarantine pest or virus whatever you can call it a disease okay and actually it came through it came to india through china okay in 1987 so these are all about the groundnut stripe virus okay yeah so if you just look into this the same way the stripeness will be the major symptom to identify okay so here you can't see clumpness or rosette won't be there just what you can see the leaves will be striped enough and the stunting will be there okay so these are all the two criteria how you can identify okay okay so these are all about the major oil seed crops and uh, their symptoms etiology okay so how we can manage the disease with respect to uh, oil seed crops right so here when it comes to bacteria virus okay so virus we won't see in that that much prominently in case of oil seeds okay so you can take phytoplasma right even fastidious vascular bacteria also not prominent so if you just take out this so how we are going to manage this particular disease okay so whatever may be the disease okay either it is a fungi whatever first you should start with the you should know the what are the principle how i can start managing a disease right so you should have you, i think you know about the principles of disease management right the one is avoidance right then the second one is exclusion right then third one is protection right then fourth one is eradication right then fifth one is resistance right so <clears throat> like this you can have yeah okay and you can have therapy also no matter so this is how you should uh, plan how i can i am able to manage the particular disease okay so you should try to integrate all this that is nothing but integrated disease management so that effectively you can control the disease okay rather than a specific disease approach it should be a more of crop approach okay because if you are trying to go for the more of crop approach and even uh, integrated disease management then it will be uh beneficial to you also and even ecology also right so here avoidance is nothing but you are trying to avoid the pathogen from the crop okay you are either spatially okay either spatially or temporarily you are separating the uh, pathogen that means spatially means say uh, now in this location or in delhi it is highly epidemic or uh, in particular pusa campus okay so what we have to do we have to plan in a other area okay where the disease is not there so that is called avoidance okay so in outside the 
Pusa campus, we should plan for the commercial propagation or commercial cultivation. Okay, that is one thing. And temporarily means say the uh, infection is there during August at peak time. So what we can do, we can go for early sowing so that uh, it will start producing the reproductive structure so that the later also if it, infection is there, because you know that in if infection is there means uh, see on a single day it won't just progress it needs a time right for every pathogen it it has to start from cradle to adolescent the same way it takes time so thereby if it is start infecting the already that crop might have completed its uh, threshold or a critical stage right so thereby we can maintain our uh, yield saturation so like that we can have avoidance that is one thing then exclusion is nothing but as you know that it is a regulation right so regulation is nothing but like you are providing phytosanitary certificate, right? Or you can providing uh, import or export permits, right? Or you are doing quarantine. So these are all the procedure what you can follow to avoid pathogen being transported or transmitted, right? Even pest risk analysis, right? So that is also most key important to have uh, safest cultivation in future. So that is through exclusion. Then protection and eradication is nothing but protection is you are just making a barrier that pathogen should not touch with the host. Okay, so uh, seed treatment, it is nothing but a barrier. What you are doing on the seed treatment, you are just coating a fungicide or even a insect uh, pesticide, right? Thereby the pathogen ha will have difficulty in breaking this barrier. So that is called protection, right? And even leaf also what you will, you will spray and the spray will be having a coat layer so that the pathogen unable to infect that is also protection eradication means already pathogen is existed okay the already uh, pathogens existence is there on that field now you want to remove that okay so here you are making the pathogen not to enter into your house but here the pathogen already entered into your house so you are trying to uh, throw away from house so this is how the eradication and protection differ right and resistance so as you know that the resistance genes will be there, right? The resistance genes or tolerance genes. So thereby you are using that one to evade the pathogen. Okay. And therapy, the same way, the combining of protection eradication, you can see therapy in some test book, you can see therapy is nothing, but they will try to cure the uh, tissue also. Okay. So that is also kind of uh, therapy. Okay. So these are all the strategies, how you can plan to control a particular disease. Okay. So with respect to oil seeds, Okay, so if you want to control the bacterial disease, right? So what you can do, you can start with the, the first thing is sanitation. Okay, so sanitation is the most important criteria. Okay, so for sanitation, what you can have, you can go for bleaching powder. Okay, so bleaching powder plays a, especially in field crops, people won't use. Okay, if it is very uh, site seed production, you need like that, then means uh, it is economical. Okay, but usually people go for fruit crops. Okay, there they will go for the bleaching powder, right? Then roguing out. Okay, especially the wilt, wilt pathogen or wilt diseased plants. Okay, so these plants should be roguing out. That is the key important thing. Then uh, try to avoid flooding irrigation because you know that these wilt pathogens will be transmitted through the, or transported through the irrigation, right? So you should avoid that. That is the primary criteria. Then followed by what you can, if you want to go for biological control, you can go for Pseudomonas spray, right? Pseudomonas fluorescence at the, gram, at the rate of 10 gram per liter. You can have, you can drench also. Drench is nothing but, see, uh, this is the plot, right? So this is the rows. So what you can do along the side of the crop, you can make a one furrow and you just pour the liquid. Okay. So, so like this, you can keep on doing. So that is called drenching. It will be like this also it can be done. Or if it is a uh, economical crop or if it is a big crop, what you can do around the plant, around the tree, you can just uh, encircle and you can pour. That is also drenching. Okay. So you can go for spray also. Pseudomonas. Okay. So the primary criteria, what it can do is, as you know that it is a plant growth promoting rhizobacteria right that means it will promote the growth of the plant also and it will produce it will induce the isr that is nothing but induced systemic resistance that means 
it will just induce some chemicals if i want to be specific it is ethylene okay so it will just induce this chemical and it will try to produce some resistance uh, mechanism towards the pathogen okay so that's why the pseudomonas is most important then if you want to go for chemical okay you can go for the seed treatment also with pseudomonas or slurry treatment also and if you want to go for chemical <clears throat> you can go for copper sulfate or uh, most economical in, you can use copper sulfate also or copper hydroxide also but now the commercially available the blight of that is copper oxy chloride okay oxy chloride so this will be utilized along with the okay so coc i can call it as blight ox along with the you can call it as strepto plus right so strepto plus is nothing but it is streptocycline or sorry streptomycin sulfate plus tetracycline hydrochloride that is hcl okay so usually the strepto plus will be most probably will be getting like this only through different names like either strepto plus or plantamycin okay so so many commercial names are there but the ingredients will be this much only streptomycin sulfate plus tetracycline hydrochloride and the commercially they will be having 90% and this one is 10% okay are weight by weight the thing is say if you are taking 100 gram of strepto plus means okay in that uh, 90 gram will be about streptomycin sulfate and 10 gram of about tetracycline hydrochloride okay so this will be the combination and you can go for spray with the 0.5 gram per liter okay so why we are using copper means it will try to avoid the resistance over the pathogen if you are keep on spraying this kind of systemic uh, bacteria side or whatever so it will patho uh, the bacteria will get the resistance over that particular bacteria side right so to avoid that we are blending with the blight ox that is copper oxychloride that is with the 3 gram per liter so this is how you can control the bacterial disease so with respect to viral disease okay how i am going to control the viral disease with respect to alcs right the same way the most important criteria to uh, manage the viral disease you have to maintain the sanitation okay then early roging out so this is most important early roging out okay so in food crops it innovate is difficult when it comes to a uh, field crops i think removing a infected one early is not a big problem right so <clears throat> you are making a barrier so that you can easily have uh, control over the pathogen so early, early roging should be there right then the next one is barrier crops like bajra and sorghum right so these are all can make a physical barrier barrier towards uh, passage or entry of the insects right then you can go for either decoy cropping or trap crop right or antagonistic crop okay so decoy crop is nothing but it will attract the pathogen okay the pathogen will be attracted or you can call it as a insect or even the bacteria whatever it will be attracted but the multiplication of the pathogen will be hindered okay so multiplication won't be there but trap crop is not like that the pathogen will be attracted okay the same way it is attracted but the multiplication will be there okay so this is how the difference between decoy and trap crop exists and antagonistic nothing but it will be usually either maybe attraction or whatever so it will try not to it will just kill the particular it will kill or it will be have a static activity okay the example can be we can take it as a marigold okay so like this so yeah so this is how you can follow then followed by if you want to go for chemicals okay so as you know that for viral there is no specific chemical what we can have but to control the vector population so you can have either acephate right that is 1 gram per liter or you can have thiomethoxam right that is 0.3 gram per liter 
right or diophentheron that is also 0.5 to 1 or 0.8 gram per liter right or you can yeah and dimethoate 1.5 to 1.7 ml per liter or even confidor or imidacloprid right up to 0.5 to 1 ml per liter there are so much of formulation with respect to each chemical so you can stick on to the respective formulation okay so these are all the uh, so these are all the chemicals what we can have okay yeah so any doubt any doubt sir sir can you explain antagonistic okay okay, okay. See, antagonistic is nothing but why we are calling antagonistic means it is having some a repellent action or a negative action on the particular pathogen. Okay, that's why we are using the term antagonism. Antagonism is negative interaction, right? An opposite of symbiosis. So here, when we are growing marigold, you know that marigold can secrete some kinds of volatile compounds, right? Which is uh, the compounds may be okay either it may have impact on nematode eggs right it may not able to hatch the nematode eggs that is one thing or it will directly kill the particular cutin uh, you can call it as yeah cutin molecule or even case of fungi it may be a chitin right so like that it may just break down the structural integrity okay so, so you are talking about uh, metabolic substance that are secreted by plants see metabolic substance not only here i am I, I am telling about the antagonistic cropping right so antagonistic cropping means just the marigold yeah the marigold can produce these kinds of metabolic or secondary metabolites right so those will be um, having antagonism or antagonistic activity against the particular either bacteria or the insect vector or the virus if it is inside the plant right the same way you can have the decoy cropping or the you can have the uh, one more is yeah trap crop like this could i able to answer your question yes sir okay any other doubt sir what is difference between ester yellow uh, disease of sunflower and uh, sesamum phyllodi Come once again. Tell me once again. Uh, ester yellow disease of sunflower and okay. sesamum phyllodi. Okay, okay. Because see. they are mm. same, same. Yeah, yeah. See, the thing is, you know that <clears throat> if you take out the phytoplasma, most of the time it will cause the similar symptoms. Okay. Usually, how we will. Identify the particular phytoplasma means we have grouped according to its 16s RNA, okay, or DNA, whatever you can call it as. So we made nearly 24 groups, okay, based on its characters, and it will be like group one, and group two, and group three, group four, like that. We are keep on uh, differentiating based on their 16s RNA characters, okay. So if you take group one, that aster yellows will come, okay. The second one, if I'm not wrong. groundnut i think or fourth so i am unable to get the exact grouping so like that so if you are the asterellos will come under the group one category okay so like that we will categorize just like you can uh, on par with your species taxonomy whatever we are naming like that you can consider okay so here the symptoms may be everywhere like it may have little leaf okay either it may be having um, asterellos okay asterellos nothing but it is producing a yellowness of the plant or the leaf or the particular structure what it is infecting okay so this is our yeah okay so here you can see so phyllodi means as the phyllodi means the flower structure will be deformed into leaf like structures okay so this is the 
uh, differentiating or particular character of the pilodi okay flower structures will be but sir here also green color in aster yellow that's what here the species is the group one is infecting that's why we are giving name as aster yellows okay that's what so here when it comes to other um, phytoplasmas the groups will change okay why we are giving aster yellows means this is the particular species which is infecting the sunflower okay actually here the names they have directly given as aster yellows because it was infecting a aster flower initially that's why the name directly they have taken it as a aster yellows and even scientifically we have named that one as aster yellows only okay if you take out just take out the 16 16s rna group group 1 will have aster yellow as the name okay the same name we have given it in the uh, sunflower disease here it is the same symptom what it is causing on the aster it is also causing here only okay so this is all so don't uh, take too much about this the thing is here the species will differ okay the particular species will differ so whether you see whether it is causing phyllodi or not here so the name has been given as aster yellow that's it okay did i answer your question yes sir okay any other doubt any other doubt sir how can we manage groundnut disease because groundnut are below the soil and okay with biological method see <clears throat> So whatever may the crop, okay. So it may be uh, above ground part or below ground part. You have to think about which disease it is having more prominent. Okay. So if you take out, uh, say if it is a groundnut crop field, okay. So usually the major disease what it is coming means say tikka, right? So leaf spot. So if it is leaf spot means what I will do? I will check whether it is a early or late. Okay. So prominently. if i want to control this i will go for the spray of the kavach that is nothing but chlorothalonil at the rate of 2 g per liter right so i can control that that is chemical control okay then <clears throat> as you know that it is caused by sarcospora so as i have my knowledge so sarcospora by sure, both early and mature hmm? both early and mature are caused by sarcospora yeah yeah so the name has been changed as earlier it was a sarcospora now feva is or abscess is there and or you are you can take it as a perfect stage of mycospirella okay you can consider as mycospirella okay so this is the species sorry genus which is infecting the either early or you can tell it as mycospirella personata or mycospirella arachidicola okay like that you can call it as but with respect to uh, management that that's what you can go for the kavach spray okay and moreover it is not a mandatory that the both So disease should come. Either it can early can come or late can come. But usually the late will have more impact than the early one. Okay, so let it be. So if you want to go for, you can just spray and you can control it. That is one thing. Either okay, I I want to avoid early tick coming. So what you will do? You will take the seeds. Okay, you will take the seeds and you will treat the seeds. Either with the what you can treat. Either you can treat with the cowage. Or capton, okay. So you can treat, and up to sixty, thirty uh, to sixty days, it will give sixty days too far. Okay, you can take thirty to forty-five days, it can give a uh, good result. Okay, so thereby you are controlling the particular disease, right? The same way, I, either you can go for the pseudomonas also. If it is a soil-borne pathogen, the pseudomonas trichoderma can give very good, uh, yeah, what you can call protection. Okay, so like that, the particular disease will have. particular mode of uh, the thing is when you are treating trichoderma and pseudomonas it will just do the biopriming biopriming is nothing but it will activate the signaling molecules or defensing molecules inside the seeds okay so the when the plant starts producing that two leaves right the signaling molecules like ethylene or gibberellic acid whatever are there it will be produced okay thereby the pathogen if starts infecting then this chemicals will start producing the <coughs> uh defense signals okay so like that it will be controlled and uh, <clears throat> with respect to viral disease as i told the thing is you have to go for the barrier crop okay so there thereby you can avoid like trips 
like that you can avoid I can, uh, then you can go for the uh, blue tra uh, traps right blue sticky traps you can go right if it is with respect to white fly means you can go for the yellow sticky traps right then uh, fly trap sir sorry fly trap can we use light trap yeah if it is moths means you can go even um, what is that hormone uh, yeah, hormonal traps can also be used. Okay, so it is with respect to which disease you want to control. That's what I'm restricting here with respect to viral transmitted disease, right? So moths are seldom. So if you want to go for control of the sucking pest, means these kinds of things you can use. And uh, apart from that, the major giving good result is with respect to insecticide, right? So as I told the thiomethoxam or diphenthuran or acephate, whatever the chemicals best effective for a particular disease, so if you take imidacropid used to give very good result, but if you take Southern India, especially Karnataka and North Karnataka region, the imidacropid because of excessive usage, the resistance over that uh, chemical has been there. So that's why the people are now shifting towards confidar to or in neonicotinoid compounds to like other inside like thiomethoxam, those things. Now they are giving better result. So like that with respect to each uh, locality, the uh, disease management will differ. Okay, so that is nothing but idea. Okay. Anything else? Any other doubt? Ask me if you have any doubt, please ask me. No doubt? Shall I start uh, vegetables diseases then? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, coming to vegetable diseases. Okay, so I will be dealing with the major cross because as you know that vegetable will be so much of there. So I will be dealing with respect to your uh, exam point of view. Okay. So the first one is tomato, right? So here you can see the bacterial spot which is caused by Xanthomonas compestris pathover vesicatoria, right? So this is the most important even uh, with respect to export also this most important disease right so that if you want to just you have entered the field now you want to identify uh, whether it is infected with the bacterial spot or not so how, how i am going to infect uh, sorry identify right the thing is you can check for the as i told bacteria water soaked lesion or translucent right translucent lesions you can see or like this, it will be there, right? Then the center will be grayish in color, okay? The center will be grayish and outer region will be black or brown. Then it will have yellow halo, right? So this is about the leaf symptoms. And once it starts progressing, then you can see here, the entire lamina will become yellow and defoliation will be there. So this is how the disease progression will be there, right? So with respect to fruit, only at green stage it will start only at green stage the infection will start on the fruit okay and it will be slightly raised or sunken okay both criteria can be seen but most of the time it will be a little bit sunken in nature okay see here you can see the black spots will be there and it will be little bit uh, down okay and <clears throat> inside that if you just look out, there will be uh, production of gas bubbles. Okay. I think this question was there in recently in ERS, I think. So <clears throat> the thing is why it is producing gas bubbles means it will be nothing but a carbon dioxide. It will try to maintain the anaerobic condition inside that spot so that the carbon dioxide production will be there. Thereby, when you just dip in, you will be able to see gas bubbles inside that. So that's the nature of Xanthomonas compestris pathover vesicatoria. Okay, so this is how you can easily identify whether it is a bacterial spot or not, right? Then coming to bacterial speck. So, right? So, speck is nothing but it is just like a chlorosis, right? So, there I have differentiated it is full of either a spot with a grayish center or a brownish region, then yellowing, right? But here it mainly starts with as a black lesion or spots, okay? Then a slightly if it is on the young leaves a leaf deformation will be there okay leaf deformation will be there if it is a young leaf 
ओके एंड या एंड येलोइंग विल बी वेरी सेल्डम ओके सो येलोइंग विल बी वेरी सेल्डम ऑन पर्टिकुलर बैक्टीरियल स्पेक एंड इट इज कॉज्ड बाय सुडोमोनास सिरिंजे पैथावर टोमेटो ओके एंड द स्पेक्स विल बी वेरी माइन्यूट व्हेन इट कंपेयर्ड विद द बैक्टीरियल स्पॉट ओके देयर यू कैन सी द संकन स्पॉट्स वर देयर ऑन फ्रूट बट हियर इट इज इट विल बी जस्ट लाइक अ मोल राइट सो इट विल बी जस्ट लाइक अ मोल ओके it will be very minor so this is how bacterial specs and bacterial uh, spots will differ right and coming to bacterial canker that is clavibacter michiganensis subspecies michiganensis right so this one the thing is mainly it will tra transmit through the or enter through the trichomes okay or hairs of the tomato okay so the thing is how you can differentiate or how you can identify means the first thing is the entire leaf margin of the lamina will start infecting okay the infection will start from the margin and it will proceed towards the lamina right in earlier diseases we have seen only spots but here it is not like it's like a blotch entire leaf blightening will be there and it will be producing this is called canker that is one thing then after that if you just check out the fruits okay there will be encrustation okay encrustation will be there with respect to encrustation the surrounding will be whitish color i think here you can see okay the canker will be whitish color okay so this is how you can easily identify between specks and spot and canker okay the canker that's why this canker is nothing but and uh, uncontrolled multiplication of the cell okay necrosis so that's how here you can see see here you can see encrustation right and just like cancerous cells will be there on the fruit right and if you take on the uh, temperature criteria for both usually xanthomonas will prefer from 24 to 30 degrees celsius right and pseudomonas will prefer around 22 to 28 degrees celsius or 25 like that and clavi uh, clavi sorry clavibacter will prefer high temperature like say from 35 to even 32 to 34 degrees celsius it can thrive so this is how the temperature also plays a key role in uh, establishment of the particular bacteria okay so xanthomonas pseudomonas both are as you know that it's a gram negative and clavibacter is a gram positive bacteria okay usually the colonies will be like v shaped like this it will be there okay and both both of them xanthomonas and pseudomonas are either monotrichous or lophotrichous okay xanthomonas will be monotrichous only and either pseudomonas will be either lophotrichous or monotrichous okay okay then coming to bacterial wilt so this is also one of the major disease okay throughout the india right so i think in previous class i have told about ralstonia race and bayavar right so if you take on on the tomato as i told solanaceous right so the solanaceous means it is race one bayavar either maybe one two three so these are all the possibility which can infect the tomato okay so what are all the symptoms so say you have entered the tomato orchard or field whatever so the thing is first you identify which is plant, which plant is uh, wilted in uh, green uh, color only okay so usually if wilting means you, you might have seen fissure and wilt right it will be either yellow or necrosis will be there or defoliation will be there but if you see the tomato field the it will be just like a, you have not given water for that particular plant like that it will be looking okay so that is the first identifying uh, criteria then in initial days after two uh, initial days means say now the infection has, uh, from today you have observing that the plant is getting wilted like this then if you see the next day or the evening time the plant will be very healthy because it has recovered okay so like that it will be looking because Uh, the key reason why it is looking like this means as i told the water supply okay so during the sunny days there will be lot of evaporation so that the water availability will not be there so different that the plant will try to uh, reduce its leaf or it will start rolling okay that is the one thing so that it can reduce the water evapor uh, transpiration out so but the night time it will be normal okay as the disease progress the leaf will start wilting okay so that is the one criteria and if you want to identify some more deeply means say if you just cut open the 
a stem means you can see the browning of the twig or the stem okay it is because of the plugging of the bacterial colony through the uh, xylem cells or phloem cells okay so there will be re restriction of the water supply or the food supply so that is the one criteria then if you want to check whether it is a bacteria or not just you take a glass of water okay in a transparent glass of water and you just cut this stem portion okay and one healthy portion okay and one healthy and another one is diseased one brownish one you just keep in a two glass of water and okay in either by side okay and you just see after one minute if it is diseased means there will be profuse white color oozing will be there okay if it is healthy that will not have produce that will not produce that much of oozing okay but here it will be like this it will be there if it is healthy if it is diseased means that will be profuse uh, oozing will be there okay so this is how you can easily characterize whether it's a bacterial wilt or not okay then the next disease is viral disease is tomato leaf curl virus okay so how i can identify whether it is a tomato leaf curl virus or not right so the first criteria is first you have to observe whether leaves are curled upward or not right so usually if it is a tomato leaf curl virus means the leaf will be curled upside right like that you can see right then usually if you just shake the plant there will be flying of white flies or if you just uh, twist uh, turn on the uh, plant and if you just see also you can able to see the eggs or the uh, white flies okay so this is how you can easily and of course the as the other diseases or the other viral diseases point out like stunting will be there yield reduction will be there and there will be no reproductive structures so the same and even the reduction of the leaf size everything will be there with respect to tomato leaf curl also okay and it is caused by this is the species name and the genus is begoma virus okay which is a single standard dna virus the rest of the things what we have studied till now it was a ssrna okay but here it is a single strand dna virus okay then tmv and cmv in case of what is that mm, tomato right tmv and cmv so with respect to C tmv tobacco mosaic virus here you can see the same mosaic whatever we have seen in the tobacco the same kind of symptoms will be seen on the tomato also but here it is a seed borne there we were saying it was a mechanical but here it is a seed borne okay when it comes to cmv it it will produce a particular symptom that is shoe string okay that means say usually this is the healthy leaf right like this but if you take out this this is leaf it will be like this see the leaf lamina will be reduced drastically and the lamina will be very narrowed that's why we will call it as a shoe string like this you can see right so this is how the cmv will cause particular uh characteristic symptom okay then coming to tomato spotted wilt virus as we have seen this particular genus in case of groundnut right but here the genus is the same uh, the genus is here the arthrotospovirus okay and the species is tobacco sorry tomato spotted wilt virus so as the name only indicates see tomato spotted right here the ring spots will be there right so that is that is the one thing on the leaf and even on the tomato fruit also you can see ring spots right so this is the easily identifying characteristic then wilt so as the name indicates it will cause necrosis the first thing is it will cause the necrosis the top portion of see here the drying of the twigs are taking place right and of course the later stages the plant will be wilted right so this is how the wilting will takes place then tomato big bud so this is caused by phytoplasma right so this is caused by phytoplasma so the thing is here the symptom you can see is 
the whatever the buds are there right the flowering buds are there that will become a very big inside see here gigantic look is there right so this is how the buds will become uh, very big inside okay and of course the little leaf will be there the internodes of the twigs will be reduced okay then the leaf size will be reduced okay and even fruit also there will be uh, you can call it as ring spots right then followed by the deformation of the fruits and uh, roughy fruits will be there okay so this is how you can characterize tomato big bud okay then coming to potato so the same thing what we have seen in uh, what is that tomato right that is ralstonia solanaceae right ralstonia solanaceae so the same pathogen okay so here the potato means either it can be infected by the race 1 or specifically race 3 okay so here the biovar 1 2 3 can be there here the biovar is either 1 or 3 or 3 okay so this is the combination what the pathogen can infect the potato okay so the same sudden wilting will be there right the dry uh, greenish wilting will be there so as i told the oozing test right here you see the infected will is showing profuse oozing right so this is how you can easily identify whether it is a ralstonia or not then ralstonia will produce particular a pinkish colony when you are culturing on that tetrazoleum chloride media okay that is nothing but tzc media okay and here see the wilting and one more thing is the if you cut open the fruit you can just see the ring like structure or ring like Uh, lesions will be there okay so that is the one of the key prominent criteria character to identify this uh, wilt okay anyway by looking into the field only you can easily identify right okay then coming to next is black leg okay so <clears throat> black leg and soft rot the disease is caused by pectobacterium atrosepticum this is also one of the major disease right so as per the name it will start producing the black leg okay or white stem like that okay so at the collar region of the twig the blackness will be there right so if you just cut open see here the blackening of the stem will be there right then as you know that pectobacterium will produce the pectin enzyme so it will start macerating the tissue rotting will be there right so if it is early infection the stunting will be there then chlorosis of the entire plants will be there so this is how you can differentiate it is black the particular to particular character to identify black leg is the same the name black leg okay if you just take out the stem and you see whether a brownish uh, length is there or not okay so if you are getting confused with that then check for the tuber whether the tuber maceration or rotting or any smell is there so then you can confirm right then one more pathogen is dicaea okay so that is also another the same black leg and tuber soft rot it can cause okay it is also close relative of irvinia and pectobacterium only okay so dicaea can cause the same black leg okay then stunting will be there right then the same like black leg and stunting you can easily find on the black leg and the tuber soft rot okay then potato ring rot caused by clavibacter michiganensis subspecies cepadonicus right there we have seen tomato canker which is caused by subspecies uh, michiganensis right but here the subspecies is cepadonicus right so as the name indicates potato ring rot the potato if you just cut open you can see the see here i think you can able to see the ring right so like that you can see the ring formation when it is in fact right then as you know that it is entering through the trichome okay so it will play a, a major role in entry of the pathogen then the leaf mottling or more yeah leaf mottling or specks will be there see here you can see the the darker areas will be replaced by the 
greenish areas so like that okay then uh, later stages it will start producing necrosis then yellowing okay so this is how the potato ring spot or sorry ring rot can be identified right then common scab of potato caused by streptomyces scabies okay streptomyces scabies so how i can identify whether it's a common scab or a powdery scab so powdery scab you know that it is a spongospora subterranea right spongospora subterranea so now you have entered a potato orchard right or field so you want to identify whether it is infected with common scab or potato uh, powdery scab see just uh, pull out the plant and you check whether the uh, tubers are having rough encrustation okay if you just uh, place your hand and you just uh, swipe if you can see roughness of the potato tubers like this cracked one right cracked and roughness of the encrustation of the particular potato but if you just check for the powdery scab as the name only indicates a powdery mass will be attached to your hand when you are rubbing okay so the powderiness will be there and this much roughness won't be there even though the potato will be stout but still uh, you can able to uh, dust the powder on the potato infected powder scab pot, uh, potatoes okay so this is how you can easily identify and this one you, you know that it's a mycomycet or a protozoa this is a gram positive bacteria right then zebra chip of potato caused by liberobacter so the fastidious in uh, vascular inhabiting bacteria fastidious vesicular bacteria okay so you can call it as a candidatus liberobacter solanaceus this is the scientific name for the particular zebra chip of potato okay or uh, pathogen so the thing is the leaf will be rolled upwards the first criteria to identify right then the second one is if you just open the cut open the uh, potato okay you can see the specks light colored specks like this okay and you can see some case purpleness of the leaf and why the name zebra chip right what what was the reason to name the this disease as zebra chip means see here you are unable to distinguish what is the exact symptom it is causing but unknowingly when you are just fried this okay for chips this is the healthy one see this is the diseased one it will make a zebra like uh, how the zebra is having white and black color coats right uh, alternation the same way brown and white alternation will be there just like a stripe right so this is how the name has been given as a zebra chip okay it is nothing but chips okay when it was fried they come to know that so this is how the diseased one used to come like this so that's why they named it as a zebra chip okay so these are all the criteria to identify whether it is infected with the zebra uh, liberobacter or not so this was also a question during recent uh, ars exam okay then coming to next that is tomato leaf curl new delhi virus okay so it is something but leaf curl virus okay it is causing on the potato crop okay so this is causing on the potato crop so here you can see the same upward rolling will be there okay and it is caused by new delhi virus and it is transmitted through the white fly right and rest of the water all other virus characters like stunting and uh, uh, leaf size will be reduced so everything will be there with respect to this also okay yeah then the next one is potato leaf curl virus so this is the most important disease right so to identify this of course the leaf will be rolled upwards that is first criteria to identify then the second one is usually you have to see whether it is a aphid affected feed okay so the aphid will be more in number okay and it is a phloem or yeah it will be concentrated in the phloem okay so usually the virus will take the insect will take the virus from the leaf right especially aphid 
it will take from the epidermis but when it comes to potato leaf curl virus okay sorry leaf roll virus okay it should be or potato leaf roll virus it will extract the virus from the extract the virus load from the stem or the phloem okay so that's why it is a persistent virus okay see even though aphid usually uh, transmit in a non persistent manner but this is in a persistent manner it will transmit that is potato leaf roll virus that is one thing if you just cut open the potato right if you just cut open the potato and if you see here you can see the brownish specks right the brownish some specks will be there like this so this is how you can easily identify that is one thing right then the one more criteria for this is when it enters this virus when enters into the plant if the plant is infected with the potato spindle tuber virus also potato spindle tuber virus also what it does means as you know that the potato spindle tuber will will be carried to the healthy field or next through mechanical means okay it doesn't have any vector right so this virus is there right so when it is multiplying it will also integrate the this <coughs> virus rna and it will integrate and it will in inside this particular inside this virus coat it will integrate the potato spindle tuber virus rna also and it will carry and it will infect the healthy one so here you can see the double infection is taking place even polaro virus is also infecting and even it will able to transmit the uh, virus also so this is how the recent report was there okay so just make note of it is a polaro this was also in question okay in errors so potato leaf roll virus okay that's why the tomato and tomato and potato will have major question uh, taking area okay so that's why you should be able to know each and every minor disease also from this two crops okay then potato virus a and potato virus x okay so if you see the both will cause mild mosaic right so potato virus a strain a and potato virus x both will cause mild mosaic so you are unable to identify whether it is infected with mosaic or not so like that it will be very mild right so if you check for the potato virus y virus okay species y it is also poti viride okay poti virus right so that is nothing but potato virus y that is short form called as poti virus so it will cause severe mosaic okay so it will cause severe mosaic so you should differentiate between potato virus x and potato virus y and a x and a will cause mild uh, mosaic and y will cause severe mosaic okay so the yield will be yield reduction will be very high okay then potato spindle tuber virus right so this is a virus disease right so it was identified in 1980s right if you just take out the plant it will be highly stunted just like a virus right see highly stunted but how i can identify per, uh, particular disease means it is mainly through the spindleness of the particular tuber the tuber is there right it will be like a dumbbell shape that's why it is called the name spindle tuber viroid okay <laughs> so and usually the tubers will be rough right it will be very rough and the cracking will be there see here how you are having cracks right like this the cracks will be there as i told it is mainly through mechanical means right if you are uh, say if you are cutting uh, in your dehalmination will be doing right so if that is done through knives and those things will be there means when you carry over to the healthy fields and you cut the same with the same knife the infection will proceed so this is the rna of the potato spindle tuber virus okay single stranded rna circular rna right okay then potato purple top which is caused by phytoplasma okay so as i told in zebra chip also the purpleness of the leaves will be there right that is a one of the symptom but here the key symptom is purple top is only with respect to top leaves the purpleness will be there if it is infected with the phytoplasma right so here you can see how the purpleness of the particular leaf is there okay and of course 
the leaf size will be reduced that is one thing then stunting will be there so rest of the whatever the viral and phytoplasma diseases are there that will be there but here rather than making a little leaf and phyllody we are having a purpleness of the uh, top leaf okay that is our top leaf yeah then coming to brinjal the same bacterial weed caused by ralstonia solanaceae right so sudden wilting of the plant then vascular discoloration or plugging right then if you just cut open you can see the browning of the vascular bundles right then the plant will be dead right the so same symptoms what it will be producing on other tomato or potato whatever the so same it will produce on the brinjal this is also major disease with respect to brinjal okay then little leaf of brinjal that is caused by phytoplasma okay so if you take out the phytoplasma uh, here you can see the major symptom is it will just reduce the leaf lamina size whatever the lamina size is there na so this is there means the size will be drastically reduced okay and that is one thing then internodes will be shortened okay so internodes will be shortened and the vector is here ishimonas fissitis okay which is a leaf hopper okay it is ishimonas fissitis okay so this is the vector then coming to next crop chilli right so the bacterial leaf spot is caused by xanthomonas campestris pathover vesicotaria right the same pathogen okay which was causing on the tomato right so <clears throat> that is the organism so how you can identify means the same water soaked lesions will be there initially then it will start as a minute spot right later it will the minute spot will become gray centers right and with a yellow halo and it will start collapsing when it infection will be severe so this is how you can identify okay then coming to chilli leaf curl okay so this is infected by genus begomo virus okay the genus is begomo virus and species is chilli leaf curl virus okay chilli leaf curl virus is the species and this is also single stranded dna right so how, how i can identify means the simple the leaf will be curled upwards that is one thing the leaf size will be reduced right then you can check for the white fly flying right if you, it will be underside of the leaf if you just shake the plant the white fly will be flying so there you can easily identify whether it's infected by leaf curl or not right the next viral disease is tospo virus right so the name arthotospo so how you can identify means the same it will have ring spots either on the fruit either on the leaf both can exist see here how it is very nicely it is having ring spots right so like this it will have very characteristic ring spots right and on the fruit also it will have ring spot either it may be green either may be ripe one so both will have and it is transmitted by thrips that is prankella salgi right so it can transmit and even even thrips palmi also can transmit right yeah and seldom you can see the necrosis also okay and chilli muruda complex okay so this one is major in south india rather than north okay especially in karnataka and some parts of maharashtra and andhra we can able to see the chilli muruda complex okay so <clears throat> majorly it is combination of insect plus virus the two insect is mite thrips and virus that is so many right tospo chilli leaf curl virus and tmv virus etc so many are there okay so like this it is having complexity okay so the thing is 
it will produce upward curling right that is the leaf curl symptom upward curling will be there then downward curling and petiole elongation it is nothing but shoe string symptom or rat tail symptom shoe string or rat tail symptom right i told you long back so if it is this is the healthy leaf the lamina of this infected will be dragged like this elongated like this so that's how the downward downward curling as you know that it is because of mite right so it is because of white fly right so the if it is a chief chilly sorry leaf curl means it will be upward curling right so if it is mite means you can see the downward curling right and you can see the silvery color of on the downward leaf also so <clears throat> thereafter there will be slight mosaicing or ring spot if it is a tospa infected early and you can you can see by the bunching of the top leaves because of the leaf cut so these are all the complex or a syndrome which we will see in case of chilli muruda uh, complex okay any doubt any doubt sir mm -hmm. without going to actual field or watching to actual field it's very difficult to identify mm -hmm. sorry sorry i did not get your question you tell me once again sir that is not question i am telling you without going and watching to actual field it's very difficult to identify this disease yeah yeah it is correct only that part so whatever may be that's why uh, when you are studying particular pathogen or particular disease means either it may be humans or uh, plant first you should assess practically what is the symptom of that without symptom if i tell that these are all the symptoms through phone and if i tell that you could able to give me suggestion means it will be bare suggestion or it will be bare idea to uh, do that so we should uh, see symptomatically either we should assess the photos how it is looking okay the same way uh, the chilli murda either whatever may be the disease you should first see what kind of, because as you know that it may be physiological disorder also right so but you should know being a pathologist i should you should know how to differentiate between it is a physiological or a pathological if it is a pathological also you should know how to differentiate between whether it is a fungi or bacterial or a virus so then only you can take out the particular management strategy and you can control otherwise your money will be waste right so this is how we should identify and that's why if you are entering into the field also first you should check for the particular symptom so see if it's a virus means all virus will produce the basic symptom that is stunting by telling i am the plant is stunted i can't tell that it is a uh, viral even bacteria will also cause stunting if i want to particular identify whether it is infected by tospo or it is infected by leaf curl then i will go for the second criteria of symptomology whether the leaf or up curl uh, upward curling or downward curling if it is downward then i will go uh, tell that okay you can go for the spray of the pegasus where uh, mite can be controlled if it is a white fly means i can tell that okay you can go for any other kind of means like acipate or whatever so you can so like that for each pathogen each insect we will have specification right the same thing will apply for the particular disease also so like this you should know yeah anything else any questions any questions okay so <clears throat> coming to next crucifer so black rot i think i told you in mustard only the same thing see here it will be entering to the idothotes right so there will be v shape same uh, entry right so yellowing will be there so the there is called v notch v notch symptom here you can see right so this is the one of the particular criteria to identify here also you can see right and <laughs> the one more important symptom is the whatever the veins are there it will be blackened okay so this veins will be blackened like this okay so this is the another criteria to identify whether it is a black rot rot or not so it is xanthomonas right compestris pathover compestris or campestris okay 
so this is the causal organism okay so the best effective method to control this is seed treatment so seed treatment plays a major role in control of this black rot okay then another one is pectobacterium keratovarum which causes soft rot okay so as i told it will produce some kind of pectin degrading enzymes right so that's why we can see the rotting or maceration of the tissue right so if it is rotting means as you, you will be knowing that it will be smelling right so we can identify whether it is a most probably the smelling of the uh, in uh, disease will be caused by either pectobacterium or irvinia like soft rust causing because it will degrade the pectinase right so thereby the infection of the again secondary pathogens can also be a, there okay so that is a major criteria to identify okay then the next one is cauliflower mosaic virus right you might have studied this one so the cauliflower mosaic virus is a species and calimo virus is the genus and family is calimo viride right so this is the double stranded dna right till now we have studied about the single stranded and single stranded dna right rna and dna but this is the double stranded dna right it is infected by sorry it is transmitted by two types of of it okay one is mysis and another one is saphis right so two types of genus can transmit this particular vi uh, virus right in a bimodal fashion so bimodal is nothing but either it will be persistent and sorry non persistent right and another one is semi persistent so like that it will be transmitted a single virus that's why it is called bimodal transmitted virus right so when it comes to infection see the mosaic will be there the mosaicness will be there right so the leaf deformation will be there then mosaicing it is nothing but <laughs> alternation of green and yellow region right then the leaf will be distorted <laughs> if it is early stage the leaf will be distorted or distorting okay yeah so this is about the cauliflower mosaic virus okay so as i told it is transmitted to the two genus that is aphis or mysis okay so it is a usually mysis will transmit in mysis persica will transmit in semi persistent and aphis will transmit in a non persistent manner okay based on the temperature this will be decided right okay so coming to management so see especially in vegetables the chemical should be more appropriate when you are selecting for the management okay so the same thing whatever i told in uh, oil seed management right oil seed crop so you should stick on to the six principles of okay six principles of disease management when you are trying go for idm so idm is the best strategy okay so <clears throat> then when you want to have proper uh, 360 degree um, management then you should start with the sanitation right then you should rog out whether infected uh, infected plant materials or plants you should rog out right then you should avoid uh, water logging especially in vegetables water logging will be there right so vegetables means usually irrigation will be there so water logging should be avoided because most of this bacteria will be fevered by the water logging whatever the soft rot black leg right so water logging should be avoided okay then yeah so if you want to control the bacteria the same thing copper oxychloride along with you can go for strepto plus that is streptomycin sulfate right plus tetracycline hydrochloride right you can have 0.5 g per liter right and it is 0.3% or Three gram per liter. So this can be used for the bacteria. So when it comes to crucifers, as I told, hot water treatment is best. Okay, hot water for black rot. 
so you can have 52 degrees celsius for 10 minutes or 54 degrees for 10 minutes it can give very good effective uh, management strategy for the black rot of crucifer okay then uh, yeah so this is one thing about the bacteria when it comes to virus okay when it comes to okay virus so the best thing is usually we will do indexing so it's nothing but identifying whether the virus is present or not in case of particular propagative material okay that is called indexing so usually in potato they will do okay so that is one thing and uh, you can use if you want to go for mechanism right the mechanism how it can be followed uh, there are several technologies like transgenic what we are using okay this is one mechanism what we can adopt for the best manner these are all breeding uh, methods okay then we can induce anti-sense rna okay that is one thing then we can have satellite rna i told you right satellite rna is nothing but this is also an rna or a kind of virus which is dependent on another virus to replicate right so if that is the case you know that if it is depending on other thing means it is trying to reduce its efficiency of uh, reproduction or its development so thereby it will act as a biocontrol that's what the sat rnas are uh, meant for okay then the double standard rnas okay then you can call it as coat protein mediated resistance So these are all the mechanism what we can adopt and even the one more good thing is cross protection i think you must be knowing about the cross protection right using a mild strain to control the severe strain mild strain just like what we are using in case of corona vaccination right the same way the mild strain will be used to control the highly infective virus right so these are all the mechanism what we can adopt in case of breeding programs or biotechnology to control the particular viral diseases right so in field what we can do means the same thing like uh, you can adopt chemicals right the same chemical you will have so much of chemicals either neonicotinoids or new uh, era chemicals so you can have anything right so even chili the most preferred one is like thiomethoxam okay so they will usually follow thiomethoxam and even acephate okay like in especially pegasus or diaphenthron in case of uh, mite and white fly control it will play a major role right then confidar also plays some role like imidacloprid okay so these chemicals can be chosen either of the chemical to control the insect right and even the pheromone traps whatever are there or sticky traps like if it is white fly means you can go for elastic trap if it is thrips means you can go for blue ticket sticky trap so to have the control over this and even the border crops are more efficient you can reduce this is by uh, 15 to 20 percent if you are raising the border crop effectively okay so these are all the management strategies what you can adopt to control the particular diseases okay any doubt if you have any doubt, just ask. Dear participants, uh, if you have any doubts or queries, please ask to Vimal Kumar. Any doubts? Hello. I think students. It seems uh, you have almost uh, clarified their concepts uh, in an easy and understandable manner. Okay. Yes. Uh, since meetups are going on, that may be 